In this video, I'm going to show you how you can execute JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, and even Excel formulas from Power Automate. And this is going to allow you to create much more powerful functionality that would be incredibly painful to create using just Power Automate actions, or uh, at least easier to maintain and understand what's going on. So without further ado, let's just jump into our scenario scenario here that we're going to do and create this flow. So within SharePoint, um, I have a list here and this list has two columns, number one and number two. And what we want to do is we want to take these numbers and convert them to their hex values and make sure that each hex value is four digits long and has a dash in between it. So you can see the title field here is already set for this row. So the hex value for 35 is 23 and the hex value for 9535 is 253F. So the title field has them both formatted as four digits with a dash in between it. And why would you want to do this ex exact scenario? Well, maybe you've got some legacy system that needs the values formatted this way, which was the reason why I actually had to look at this in the first place. And if you want to convert a number uh, from decimal to hex using just Power Automate actions, um, it's going to be painful you're, or, or, or maybe not even possible depending on your level of skill. However, if you could use something like an Excel formula, there's already an Excel formula that does decimal to hex. So how do we take advantage of that as well as use JavaScript to make this easy to do? So let's jump in and go over to Flow. And I'm going to create an instant cloud flow. And we're going to call this convert to hex. And we're going to trigger this for a selected item in our list over here. So we can just select the item and uh, run the manually run the flow on it so we can see it happen. So let's create this flow. And let's specify our site, which was our demo site. Our list was called project. And we also want to add another step called get item because we want to use the properties of that selected item to get the number one and number two. And when you use the trigger of for selected item, it doesn't return all the properties for that item. So we have to call get item. And it's going to again be from that demos site, the project list, and the ID will be the ID for the selected item. Now we add a new step. And if we do a search for script, you will see there is an action called run script. And within Excel Online, you have the ability to create scripts. And these scripts are made up of JavaScript and TypeScript. You can call these scripts from Power Automate. You can pass values to these scripts and you can return values from those scripts. So that's what we're gonna do here. So let's go back into our SharePoint site. We have a document library here called scripts. It's just a regular document library and I'm going to create a new Excel workbook. It's going to open up the blank workbook for us in Excel Online. Uh, you do have to do this in Excel Online. The functionality does not exist in the Excel desktop uh, client app, at least as of the creation of this video. I don't know if they have any plans to add it or not. But within Excel Online, you have a tab up here called Automate. If you click on Automate, it's going to open up this scripts section where you see there are some sample scripts for here for you to play with. You also have the ability to create a new script or record actions. If we click on new script, you can see that it is going to create a brand new script for us, which is simply just an empty function where it passes in a workbook. And you could just start writing code for this function here if you wanted to. Uh, however, what I think is really nice is this record actions functions. What this record actions function will do is allow you to actually fill out a spreadsheet, put formulas in the spreadsheet, do things in that spreadsheet, and it will convert those actions into a script that you can then edit and make changes to and tweak how you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, click on record action. It says over here that it's recording. So I'm gonna come into this cell here, B1, and I'm going to put in a formula. 
and we'll do the formula decimal to hex, des to hex, where we're going to pass in the value of a1 to convert to hex. So I'm going to press enter here, and then I'm going to stop recording. So if we look at the resultant script, first thing we want to do is we want to rename it. So we're going to call this convert my number to hex, and we're going to edit that script. So you can see we have a function here, passes in a workbook, and what it's doing is it is getting that cell B1 and it's setting the formula to that cell. So now we can programmatically set the value of A1 and it will be converted to hex and we can just grab the value of that hex value and do what we need to to it. So let's edit our function to where we're passing in our two numbers as variables. So we're going to pass in a variable called number one, which is a number, and another variable called number two, which is also a number. So now we're passing those numbers in, and we now want to take those numbers and set the value of a1 to that number so that the formula will convert it to a hex value. So let's go ahead and just copy this piece of code here. And we're, so we're going to get the a1 range, and we're going to set the value of a1 to our variable called number one. And now that that formula exists in B1, the value of B1 is the value of A1 as a hex value. So I can create a variable, and we'll call it hex1, and we will set it equal to the value of whatever is in B1. Dot get value. Okay, does that make sense? We're taking the number that we pass in as a parameter, we're setting A1 to that value, the formula will convert that to a hex, and we're storing whatever is in B1 into a variable called hex1. We now want to write some JavaScript to make sure that the value of hex1 is at least four digits long, and we'll put zeros in front of it until it's four digits long. So we're going to say while hex length is less than four, We'll say hex one equals zero plus hex one. So that's now going to make sure that it is zero padded at the beginning uh, to have a four digit variable called hex one. That is the hex version of the variable number one that's passed in. So now we just need to do the exact same functionality for the second number. So let's just copy this. And we will set a1 to the number two variable. We'll create another variable here called hex2, which will be the value of b1. And then we'll make sure that hex2 is four digits long. And finally, we're going to return from this function the value of hex1 plus a dash in the middle plus the value of hex2. And that's all there is to it. So now we can save the script. And last thing we need to do here is we need to make sure we share the script so that it can be used. So we've created our script, we've shared it. I can now go back into my flow. I can choose this run script action. The location again is going to be our demos site. Actually, what I wanna do first, this, this uh, script did get, did get uploaded, but it's called book.xslx. This, you should probably call your file exactly what it is so it's easier to find. Um, I don't love that we're now like we have a we have a flow that's in our Power Platform environment. We have a SharePoint list that's in our SharePoint site. And we have a document library with a spreadsheet. I don't love that we're creating all these separate things. So make sure that you're naming things that are easy to find, easy to understand, and make sure you document what you're doing so the person coming in behind you uh, understands this. So we're going to call this workbook uh, we'll just call it desk to hex and we'll rename it. Now in our flow, we can load that spreadsheet. So that was in our demos site. It was in our scripts document library. The name of the file was desk to hex and this will populate our script with whatever script was there and that was convert my number to hex. That's what we called it. And it's then going to prompt us for the numbers that we want to convert. So we're going to use number one from the list. 
and number two from the list. So finally, we want to update that title field with the result from our script. So let's choose the update item action. It's going to be, again, the same site, which was demos. The list name was project. The ID was the ID for the selected item. And the title field is going to be the result of the script. Okay, so now we can save this jump back over into our SharePoint site, go to our project list, and now I'll select an item, go to automate, there's the convert to hex flow, and let's run that. So click on continue, then run. Let's go ahead and do it to the other, another one as well. We'll do automate, convert to hex, run flow. If we jump back over to flow and look at it, we should see a couple of executions there. We see one succeeded, the other one succeeded. So it only took a few seconds to run. Go back to our list. Let's go ahead and just refresh the whole page. So they both show up and we can see that we now have the hex versions of those numbers four digits long with a dash in between. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can create multiple functions in the same spreadsheet. Um, I would caution you that whenever you're using these spreadsheets, um, you it doesn't like load the script into memory, then you can execute it multiple times. It actually loads the script from the file. It is then finding the script, passing the values to the script. This script is actually changing the value of these cells. So it's, it's uh, this, the, it's, you want to be careful that you're not causing a situation where two things are trying to edit the script at the same the same spreadsheet at the same time. So don't go completely crazy with this. Use it very judiciously because there's a lot of power here. But um, if you're not careful, you could probably cause yourself some headaches as well. But anyway, uh, that's all there is to it. I hope you learned something. Uh, you know, this was something that I found surprising. Saved me a ton of time to do a simple function but also very powerful. So thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and have a great day.